So, as that last video ended, things were going kind of badly for blue team. They were getting that tower, but overall they started losing fights, and things just did not go that well for them. But prior to that, what NK was doing was winning the game through constant map control, constant map supervision, essentially. So every time a buff popped up, he would go grab it and just claim it for his team. The exception being blue buff because he was being cautious about it, because he did not really ever have a safe chance to go get it. Overall, though, NK played a very, very safe version of Mundo. Now, I'm going to compare this to Rincent. Rincent played it very aggressively. He was constantly ganking, going for every buff, regardless of where the enemy is, just in your face, non-stop, just there. <laughs> Change the white balance. So, there are two different play styles, and I'm not going to say one is better than the other, but they're both situationally good. Uh, NK's is working out perfectly now because he really could not be very aggressive early on, and Rincense in his game worked out perfectly because he could he could just be everywhere, beating up dudes. I mean, beating up dudes is pretty awesome. Yeah. And the idea with objectives like that, with dragon, with golem stuff like that, is you want to take it and you want to control it and you want to make it your teams. You want you, fighting over stuff like that is good, but you never really want to make it so you have to. You want to make it so if you're getting into a fight, it's on your terms, on your territory, and the enemy is taking a huge risk to actually do anything. That's how games snowball essentially. You give the enemy two options: one, let us have golem, dragon, baron, whatever, this tower, or two, fight it. But if you fight, it's in a, a risky spot for you. So, you either lose something for sure, or you have a really high chance of losing a whole lot more. So, in this case, Mundo is going for all these map objectives. If Nocturne ever got into a fight with him, he was so far ahead so quickly because of that initial safe lizard that Nocturne was never going to beat him in a fight. I mean, Mundo is not the hardest person to kill at early levels. But with the, the CC reduction on his W and the fact that he had that against Nocturne, Nocturne has just got nothing on him when Mundo has a level advantage. <laughs> now, the, the rest of this game is kind of more of just, a, you know, about taking objectives, taking control, watching a game kind of slide out of hand, but you see the effects of all that early control that NK gave to his team. Oops. So... Let's just go ahead and hop into that game and see what happens at the very end. Um, as we left off, NK was actually entering the jungle on purple side to counter jungle after his team just won a fight, kind of, and was taking a tower. Okay, let's hop in. So already, NK Inc. tower has just gone down and he's invading. Now, he knows they're there. He saw the ward go down. You saw the Nocturne pop in and show his face. So, he doesn't really care, though, because he is just so strong. He has his ult up. He's in a good spot. Now, I will say he makes a mistake. If you watch the mini-map, you saw Nidalee disappear for a second, and he gets interrupted from this teleport. So, he's keeping up this systematic map control, constantly controlling red, constantly keeping the map in his favor, but you got to watch where you back up. Sometimes it can be a, a bit dangerous. His team tried to defend him once he got away, and as a result, Uder died. Now, that's something you have to watch out for, too. Don't save people if they don't need saving, or don't save people if you cannot save them. In that case, Uder did not need all that much support. Ari could have gotten him out there just fine enough on her own. Really, she just needed... Actually, he probably could have escaped on his own, but really he just needed a little bit of help some CC from Ari. But Uda went in too hard and it cost him. However, they're still doing okay. They're down in kills. They're, uh, I believe, equal in towers now. MF getting picked off by Nidalee. Middle an excellent duelist right now, but not that great in 1v1s. So they need, really need to get into a team fight. They start on their terms. They don't want Ash initiation on the perfect character. They just kind of want to, you know, start a fight, blow someone up really quickly, and then have Mundo and Uder stay in the fight long enough to get some kills. They have a lot of tanky DPS. 
and Jana's really good against tanky DPS. So if they can have a fight where Mundo and Uder get in there and stay in there, they will win. If not, they're going to lose every fight. So Nilly just got cut out right there. They just do so much damage. It's just amazing how much damage they do. But once again, tanky DPS versus Janna, just it's any nightmare. Or a nightmare for any bruiser. So the kiting is really quite strong of the enemy team. And if they don't catch somebody out and get into a long fight, they're going to lose it because of the kiting. But any sort of just heads on brawl, and I'm going to keep repeating this, they will win. Now, I repeat this a lot because a lot of people have trouble with tanky DPS, and the best way to fight them is to fight them and kite them, which a lot of people don't do. They're very used to kind of, you know, just straight up brawling, but if you're constantly on the move, constantly moving away from them, they suffer quite a bit, and if you have Janna who's knocking them back, back actively, it's stronger. And here's just an example of it. So that fight started terribly. It started with Mundo getting caught using his ultimate, and they're just taking a ton of damage right now, but they're in this split up fight and they're trying to actually just kind of fight them one on one. I mean, Ari's got her burst off on Nidalee right there. Mundo was just kind of sitting there fighting someone. Uder does go down, but he's taking Rise to half health pretty much on his own. And then Misfortune Sustained Damage comes in, helps take out Ash, and, well, Rise is gonna die. <laughs> or at least get chased. The stun gets off, that's pretty much him saying I'm dead. Now, this is something I find funny. Um, there are some characters, like Mundo Cleavers, not even Mundo, just his Cleavers, who are really good at killing Baron. Kogma, for example, because of his uh, W, I think Bane might be good at it. But Mundo is someone who, because of Cleavers, will just melt Baron. He does it so fast, it's ridiculous. So when you have a fast Baron clear, you don't need the entire team, you don't need a whole lot of damage. You just need to keep that fast character who's good at killing Baron alive and attacking Baron. And as you can see, they were able to get Baron with just Ari, Tarek, and Mundo. And I can tell you right now, Ari and Tarek weren't doing a whole lot of damage. So they have Baron. They got it from that one exchange, essentially. And now they're going to push that advantage. As long as in a fight they can get to the people they need to get to, they'll win. They've had so much map control, the other team is just behind in CS overall, in levels overall. And that Baron buff is the extra kick they need to burst someone down. There isn't a whole lot of bursts on blue side. There's Ari, and that's about it. I mean, Mundo Cleavers are a little bursty, MF's a little bursty, but nothing too gigantic like a LeBlanc or, you know, maybe a Rumble Burst. This is all sustained damage, pretty much. So, the fight starts. They get the stun on Ash. Nocturne gets caught in the middle of everybody and just melts because of it. He doesn't have his Warmogs yet, he just doesn't have the tankiness. He's alive for now, but not much longer. Tarek is eating the Wrath of Rise. And M Mundo is going to pretty much hold off three people. Now, Uder and Ari go after uh, the Rise down there. Which uh, is someone important to kill, because he just does a ton of damage. Ash is going to pick off Misfortune here. You can just see, like, just the auto attacks and all are enough to kill her. And uh, finish off by Nilly Spear. This lets Uder get into the fight and kill Ash. And Mundo is able to chase after Nidalee. Not get a kill on her, but chase her off, and now they can get this tower. Janna just wasn't able to keep the team away. The fight they got into was spread out, which is good for a purple side, but they weren't actually able to keep the, the DPS and tanky bruisers off. Now, this is just a funny fight. I mean, Nidalee is tanky, Uder's tanky, Mundo's tanky. No one was going to die if they fought, and it was just going to take forever and waste time. Which would have been good for purple side, actually, but blue side backed off. So here's a Nocturne catch. Once again, Nocturne should have died there. That was a lot of damage. I mean, these guys are farmed out, but it's just all sustained damage. So, it's really coming into play. However, they're just able to stay in the fight and survive for so long, it doesn't matter. I mean, the fight starts here again. The enemy team just has to start out by running because they're so scared of that damage. Now, I will criticize Janna. She really doesn't do a whole lot to keep the team kited. Like, she throws out a tornado, but her ults are always a bit delayed. She's a bit too scared to go in there and do what she needs to do. 
there's a balance when you play Janna. You need to be scared and you need to be ballsy as hell. If you play scared, you won't get the tornadoes you need to get. If you play ballsy as hell, you'll die before a fight starts. Like, that was her ult right there. Her ult is huge against Uda and Mundo, but she's not able to use it on the right people because she's playing too scared. At this point, though, it's really just a matter of uh, finishing the game. With Rise dead, they have so much damage, and they can just kind of keep going in and killing them. They're just taking out the inhibs, they're taking out the uh, turrets. Just kind of slowly whittling away. They, they know if they just go for the turrets and ignore the enemy team, they will die. But the second the enemy team dives on them for a fight, it's theirs. And as you can see, like Nocturne's going down, trying to save the base. Ash, Nidalee, and Janna on the run. Rise is back up, and they could actually turn around here, but they're only able to kill Ari, and that's about it. So, Tarek survives with just an inch of health, and I, I love this ending because check out Janna. Look at that bird. Damn. Look at Mundo. He's, he's kind of crazy, too. So, this has been Studio. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry about the uh, delays on releasing it. Next time on Wednesday... They, uh, it'll come out on time. So I'll see you guys then. Adios.